my footage is pretty smooth. I didn't see, so it's been like 14 seconds. Hello my friends, welcome to the channel and today in this quick tip tutorial video for Adobe Premiere I'm gonna show you how you can change speed of your clips on the timeline in Adobe Premiere Pro. I'm gonna show you several ways you can do it and you can pick whichever you like most. There's pros and cons of each method but I will let you decide which one you like the most and which one you wanna be using. But before we start, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe, smash the notification bell so you don't miss new videos. And if you find this video helpful and interesting, please give it a like, I appreciate it very much. Alright, without further ado, let's go get started. Okay, so let's go ahead and start Adobe Premiere. I already have my project started and as you can see, I have one file put on the timeline and I have a sequence created. If we go ahead and play it, you can see that this is just a normal speed. It's set up at 100% and usually if it's not recorded as a slow motion on your phone, it will always show at the 100% speed, even if you have recorded it at the 60 frames per second or even higher. Okay, so the method number one is actually going to be a rate stretch tool. And you can grab this tool just by pressing R on the keyboard and it's automatically going to choose this tool. Or you can just go to the tool panel over here, long press left click. And you can see that there is ripple edit tool, rolling edit tool and rate stretch tool, which is the one we need. So right now when we choose this tool, you can just go ahead and grab by the end of the clip and pull it either to the right or to the left. Let's go ahead and pull it to the right. Just going to put it like this. And now you can see that the clip has numbers added after the name of the clip and it says 70.93%. This basically means that the clip has stretched and now it is actually 30% more than it was before. So it will be playing much slower. Let's go ahead and check it out. So as you can see, the motion is much slower and the movement isn't as smooth as it was before. And this is because originally it was shot at the 24 or 23.937 frames per second. And now it's actually stretching and it needs to fill up those frames. So it's actually creating more frames in the same footage. And some of these frames get duplicated, which makes it look like it's actually slower. So just as a tip for you, if you want to slow a footage down, you always want to shoot at a high frame rate, such as 60 frames per second or higher. This way it will allow you to slow the motion down and it won't look like there's some frames being duplicated and the picture will be smooth. But now let's go ahead and shrink it down. We're just going to use the same rate stretch tool. And I'm just going to, instead of stretching it to the right, I'm going to stretch it to the left. I'm going to shrink it to the left. And you can see that now it's actually showing almost 150%. Let's see if I can make it 150. That's kind of hard to guess. So this red stretch tool works great, but it's not as precise as the other tool that we're gonna use next, but it allows you to do it pretty quick and you can just fill the gap. For example, if you have, let's say another clip on the timeline right here and you just need to fill up this gap, all you have to do is just stretch it to this clip and then it's just going to fill that gap. It's just going to automatically calculate how much faster it needs to be to fill up that gap. Okay, let's go ahead and watch this clip right now. As you can see right now, um, the footage is much smoother. It's much faster. So this really works great if you need to speed up the process. If your video is originally pretty slow and you just need to do it much faster. And as you can see, the video is really smooth because unlike stretching it to the right where it's actually extending the length of the clip and it's putting new frames in the clip, when you're shrinking it down, it's actually taking frames out of the clip. And instead of having, for example, 24 frames per second, it will have less than 24 frames and it will look much faster. It will be still pretty smooth. Just keep in mind, if, if there is some motion, like somebody's walking, if you shrink it down too much, the motion might look really robotic because it's going to miss a lot of frames. So the footage will be looking pretty funny. Okay, so this was the first method. This tool is called the rate stretch tool and it's really handy to use and you can use it anytime you need to stretch or shrink your clip. There is a second method that you can use to adjust speed of your clips. And this one is called the clip speed duration window. And how you can get to this window, you just got to press Ctrl plus R and it's going to open this window. As you can see here, right now we have the speed of 130.7%. It also has more settings that you can use and it allows you to change the speed and duration much more flexible, unlike the rate stretch tool. So let's go ahead and check this out right here. 
So for example, if I want to stretch my clip and I want to have 3% more than the original speed, I don't want to have it to go too fast. So I'm just going to put a 103. As you can see, it automatically adjusts the duration of the clip. It shows you how long it will be. The speed is going to be right exact. Let's go ahead and try it out. Press OK. And as you can see, it automatically changed the speed of the clip. Reverse speed is going to make the clip go backwards. So in case you need to have some motion going backwards, this is how you can get it done. Then there is another option here. You can maintain audio pitch and we're just going to get to it in a second. And the third option is a ripple edit, which actually if you have a few different clips is going to ripple edit it. So it's not going to create any gaps In time interpolation. It's necessary when you actually extend in the clip. Let's say you you make it slow motion. So if I set the speed here to 50%, the clip will be twice as long and somehow you need to make those extra frames. So these are the three methods that Adobe Premiere Pro can use to create those extra frames. Optical flow is actually the most advanced one. It's not just going to duplicate the frames, but it's actually going to create new frames based on the previous and the next frame. So it will require more time to render it, but it might look pretty good in the end. This might be a good option in case you haven't filmed your video in a high frame rate, but you still want to get a pretty smooth slow motion video, then this might be the option for you. It works pretty good, I find. There is sometimes some bugs in it, but overall, I think it's pretty good. If I set it at 50%, click OK. And as you can see, it has doubled the length of this clip. And now we also get in the same slow motion like we had before. As you can see, just added extra frames to my footage and now I have double the frames to fill up this clip. Let's say I want to adjust the duration of the clip to fit in a certain time frame. Then I can do it over here. Let's say let's put it like in two minutes. I want to have it in two minutes exactly. Two minutes. Click OK. And as you can see, it has automatically adjusted the speed and it set it up to 117.7%. So now it's a little bit faster, but it fits in exactly two minutes. The other option here is a reverse speed. If you use this option, it's actually going to create the motion backwards. All right, just to show you another feature, I'm going to throw another clip on the timeline here. The one that actually has some movement going on so that we can see how it's actually going to go backwards. Let's just go ahead and cut this here. And we're just going to use this one. So just go bring that window again, control R and just put reverse. OK. As you can see, the video has been reversed and now working backwards. So this is how you reverse it. And another cool feature about this window is actually maintain audio pitch. Let's go ahead and check it out how it works. I'm actually going to turn on the audio. I'm just going to remove these files. And as you can see, let's hear this right now. Problem. Let's go ahead and click stop. This is the regular speech. If I go ahead and just bring it to, let's say, 80% and don't check the maintain audio pitch, it will sound a lot different. So let's check it out again. My footage is pretty smooth. <laughs> so yeah, it does pretty sound pretty funny. And on another hand, if we go, let's say 140%, it will sound a lot faster. I can see, so it's been like 14 seconds. It changes the pitch of the voice and it sounds a lot different. But if you want to maintain the same pitch, but you want to change the speed of the clip, you can do that as well. So you just go Control R, put 140%. But then I also check mark the maintain audio pitch and click OK. And now let's check it out. I didn't see, so it's been like 14 seconds. So you can hear that the voice is much more realistic to what it sounded before, but it's still pretty fast because it does need to squeeze all that information in the much shorter clip, but it does sound pretty decent. And same thing if we do slower, let's say 80%. You can see it's going to be saved to SD card. It does have some kind of electronic sound a little bit, but you can also apply some audio effects on the audio track and make it sound more realistic. And the other feature is ripple edit. And what it does is actually if you have, let's say, we're just going to cut this in half. And for example, so if I do change this one right now, let's say I'm going to put it at 100%. Omit this check mark, put it 100%. It shrink down. And it has left a gap right here so that now the clip is normal, but then it's creating a gap. Then if you don't want this, you just got to check mark this as well, ripple edit. And now when you go to 
it will automatically move the clip next to it and it will close this gap so that your timeline remains complete. Yeah, so this is it for today. I hope you like this video. If you do, please let me know in the comment section below. And also, if you have any comments, questions, also leave them in the comment section. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe, click the notification bell so you don't miss new videos. There's going to be a lot more Adobe Premiere Pro helpful videos coming on my channel. So make sure to check them out. And this is it for now. I hope you have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching. See you later. Bye-bye.